Hey, hey, besties! Becky here with Bestie Becky Crafts, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on making tags. If you are a member of our Facebook group, uh, Fun Life on a Budget featuring Bestie Becky, then you know we have a tag swap coming up. Now, the sign up is over, partners have been picked. But I thought I would do a tutorial on making some tags. And I usually try and get my ideas. I go through Pinterest, I go through YouTube. And I came across this video from this lady who's called Live Love Scrap. And she was making tags using her envelope punch board and they were super easy and fun and if I can use a tool for more than one thing then it makes the purchase all that much better. That's probably not bad at right English but that's the way it is. So let's go ahead and get started with the small tag. So to make the small tag you'll need to cut a piece of paper that is three inches by six inches and you can use double-sided paper you don't need to but you can if you don't use double-sided paper You'll just need to, um, when we do the pocket part here, you'll just need to cover that up if you want, unless you want to leave it white. Um, these are perfect for your 6 by 6 inch paper pads um, because you can get two tags out of one piece because it's 3 by 6. So... We take our piece of paper here and our envelope punch board and we're going to punch the top. Now, this is going to be my pocket. I thought that would be super cute folded up to be my pocket. So this is going to be the top of my tag. And what you do is you line up that top corner with the center I'll show you here the center of the punch and you punch flip and you do the same thing okay so that gives you a nice edge there on the top all right and now we're going to make the pocket part and to do that, hopefully you can see, I want a two inch pocket. So I'm going to line up off the two inch line right here at the end of my paper, the two inch line, and I'm going to punch, and then I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to line it up at that two inch mark again, and punch. All right. So this is where we're going to fold to make our pocket. Now, on this edge, I could either leave it straight, which I think I might do because it's so decorated, or I could punch it like I did up here to get the same decorative edge, or I could use the corner rounder and round the corner, but I'm going to leave it straight because I like that pattern. So, once we've got it punched, then you just fold it up, matching the sides, and where that curve is down there. Give it a little crease here with your bone folder. And there's your pocket. Alright, so now there are two different ways that you can attach your pocket. You could use an eighth inch tape 
and just put on the side there and do it that way or you could use liquid glue so I'm going to go ahead and use tape Rip it. Yeah, oh, I can rip it with my finger now. Good, good deal. All right, and we're gonna do the same on the other side. Oops, same on the other side. Now, because it's double sided, I could make one with the pocket this way, and the other one I could flip over, and I could do this way or something like that. So Okay, so we've got our tape on, and then hopefully, please peel off nicely. Alrighty, and then just fold it up, and there you have the start of your tag. Now, you need to put a hole in the top of the tag. So, I'm going to find the center of my tag, and I'm going to go ahead and flip it over for that. I'm using my center ruler. Love my center ruler. And I'm going to find my center mark here and mark it. And I got a I got a new toy. I got a crop dial. <gasps> so excited. So excited. And so I've been playing with it since I got it. And it's still kind of new to me. So hopefully all goes well. But I'm going to use the 3 16th inch size grommets because I want that extra space. Excuse me. Sorry about that. I want the extra space to be able to put my ring in. This is the ring that we're going to put the tags on for the tag swap. And this is just a shower curtain ring. I got it at Walmart in the shower curtain section. Um, you can probably find some in the key section, some in the um, book section, but of course they won't be called shower curtain rings. Um, I got 12. And I don't remember how much I paid for it, but these work really well. But this is what all of our tags are going to be attached to for the swap. So, I have to have a hole in the top. So, using my crop, crop dial, I have it set on the 3 16th inch side and at about a centimeter in for my punch. And I'm going to line it up here with the punch in the center and punch and there I've got my hole and you can see just a little bit of pencil there can't have that so I'll just erase that and now let's finish putting our grommet in so these little containers are awesome but I always forget which side is up and which side is down and if you open them the wrong way then you will know that all your little grommets will fall out and that is not fun so I mark the top of my case with a piece of washi tape because I got tired of picking up grommets Alright, so there's just a little tip. And we put our grommet in the hole. And then we have the crocodile set to what the directions tell us to set it to. And I'm going to line it up in that hole and squeeze. And oh, maybe I squeezed too hard. Didn't know I was so strong. 
it's stuck. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and there we go. Got my little grommet at the top. Got my pocket. So, we've got a good start to our tag. Now, we need to put a small tag in the pocket. And I found this paper. I thought it was really cute. This is from the same paper pad. And I could either use this side or this side. And I think I'll use this side with all the words on it. It says, simple pleasures, beautiful, lovely, um, enjoy the moment, all those wonderful little sayings. So, for the tag, the tag size is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your handy dandy little punch board and again line up the top in the center of the punch. Flip it. Line it up in the center. Punch. And you get that nice little edge. And then I would like some rounded corners on this one. So I'm just going to use the rounded quarter side of my punch. And there we go. We have our tag. And slide it on in there. Just like that. And then you decorate. And for this one, I decorated it with a bow and a flower. I put some um, crochet lace through the hole, tied it with a pink ribbon, and then I added a charm. I make charms, so I just added one of those, stuck it to the um, crocheted lace there, and um, there you go. Got got a, journal, a, a tag done. So, let me show you how I made the bow, which super easy. And you're going to use your envelope punch board again. And I already cut my pieces and I don't know what I did with them. Oh, I ever have one of those days where it's like, really? Really? They were just here a minute ago. Why are they hiding? Maybe if you cleaned off your, your area, you'd find them. Well, easy enough to cut. So, we'll just cut some more. Uh, all I need is a piece of, I want to use um, craft cardstock. And my paper is three inches across. And I want my bow base to reach that three inches. So I'm going to cut my piece, excuse me, of craft card stock three inches by one inch. Okay. Oops. Cut it one inch, but I didn't cut it three. Oh, there goes my doorbell. I'll be right back. Alright besties, I'm back. It was my Schwann's man. Had to get me some some ice cream like I need it. But, <clears throat> you know, that's how it goes. Anyway, oh, I just walked up the stairs. Whew. Okay, so where were we? We were making bows. So, okay. Um, the width of my tag is three inches, so... I cut a piece of craft paper three inch by one inch to make the inner part of the bow, so I'm making a double bow. I want a piece the same size, so again, three inches by one inch. Okay. 
I'm going to cut that real fast. And then to make the outer part of the bow, all you do is cut it an inch bigger. So it'd be four inches by one inch. And that'll work for any any bow that you make like this. You, you can make it smaller, but it'd be a little more difficult if you did it smaller. But if you wanted to do bigger bows, and you could even increase the width to like, you know, one and a half or so. So, just completely up to you. But, to make the bow, super easy. You have your envelope punch board, okay? And you take one of your three by one inch pieces. And we're going to make the little corner at the, at the end, a little decorative at the end. So you're going to line up the punch in the center and punch. And then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the same thing. Line it up in the center. And see that gives you your little indents there on the end of your bow. Alright. Now, to make your bow parts, <laughs> I don't know what you call them, um, you have to take your three inch piece and you are going to just find the center, which center of three is one and a half. So you are going to place your edge at one and a half and punch, flip, Put it at one and a half and punch. And there you have the center of your bow part. But we're going to round those corners. So all we do is stick it on the other side where the corner rounder is. And punch. Now I know a lot of you have dies that make bows. And that's great, you can do that, but while I have this out, shoot, why not use it, you know? And this is another way to use it, to make tags and you can make bows. So, alright, so here is my four inch long piece, okay? And in the course, the center of that is two, so we're going to line it up at the two inch mark and punch and you flip it and do the same alright so it looks like that and then again we want to round the corners so put it in the crown, corner rounder side and punch my glue gun was set up there Ooh. There we go. Wasn't in there. All right. So there we have the three pieces for our bow. Now to put it together, the easiest way is to curl your bow parts, loop parts. Oh, what do you what do you call them? Yeah. So I just take a pencil, I hold the center of the bow, and I just hold the paper between my finger and the pencil and just kind of curl it. I don't need to pull too hard. You don't want to rip your paper, but it gives you a curl there. Okay, just like that, and then you do the same for the other side, the four inch side. Hold the center and curl. All 
All right. And now we're going to glue. And I hope my glue gun is hot enough. Because I just find that that's easier to use. But you could use glue dots if you needed to. Um, wet glue would just take you a little bit longer to um, for it to dry. And you know what? I forgot to put the center in this piece. So remember, it was a three inch piece. So line up your edge at one and a half and the other side at one and a half. Okay. There. Now it's ready. Whew. Good thing I caught that. Alright, so when we glue, all we're gonna do is we're gonna put some glue here. Or like I said, you could use a glue dot. And we'll see if my, yep, my glue's hot enough. And you're going to fold it over. But you're not going to go all the way to the center. You're just going to fold it to where the curves meet. Okay? Like so. See that? You can do the same for the other side. the four inch one and we did the same for the three inch one you want to be a little bit more careful when you fold this one over that you don't really squish that bow part that's why when they get smaller than three inches it gets harder to do it this way Same thing. Just match it up to where that curve part is. I'm just going to hold it for a second until it sets. And there you go. Alright. Now, I like my bows to puff out a little bit. So, I just take my pencil and slide it on in there. And then just kind of work it around the paper there and puff it back out like so. Same on the other side. Okay. Now this one is too small for pencil so I just use a wooden skewer I got from my kitchen and just kind of play with it. Didn't quite mean to bend it that much. Alright. So, once we do that, now we can glue our bow together. And that's why it makes it easier when you <clears throat> when you punch the center like you should makes it easier so top up a glue and you take your four inch piece and line it up there in the center hold it for a second and then you're going to do the same with that three inch piece Gun almost fell. You line it up in the center. Ta da! You have a bow. Alright, now for the center, you could just put a gem. 
you could wrap it in a piece of ribbon. You could wrap it in a piece of paper. Um, you could put a flower there. You could do whatever you feel like, really, to decorate it up. So, it'll go there. But, like I did on this one, I put some flowers. So, I was going to go ahead and make some flowers. And for my flowers, I punched it out of the same paper as my tag. And I am going to use the side with all the gold on it as my side that you will see. And I need my wooden skewer again. And I used this punch from EK Success. I think it's the medium size flower. Not, not exactly sure. You know, once you throw the packaging away. I'm not sure. So anyway, I roll all the ends of my petals over just to give it some texture you don't need to it's just what I do or if you have another technique that you use great do that there's no right or wrong here with crafting so this is a nice thing about crafting alright so there, I've rounded all my corners, and now the fun part is I take my um, big embossing tool, and I just put it in the center, and push down. See how it brings the petals up? It's, it's fun. It's just fun. And since I'm using a mouse pad, I've got lots of room to squish and that's a neat little trick is a mouse pad and I know that a lot of people don't use mouse pads anymore because you know you use your laptops and all of that but I use mine all the time and I need to actually find another one because mine's starting to get kind of kind of funky so I have my petals and I am going to glue my flower together. And when I glue my flower together, you're going to glue offset your petals. So that the petals of this one that's going on top of this one line up in the center of these petals. In between these petals. Does that make sense? You'll see. How do you guys know how to do this? So it's not like it's anything new. Alright, line it up, hold it for a second, alright, I'm going to put my, oops, got stuck here, going to do the same thing, this time we offset the petals again, Glue gun spider webs. <laughs> Big time. Alright, so there's my flower. Alright, now I, a lot of times will go back and kind of, you know, play with it, raise up those petals, give it some more dimension. I might get my wooden skewer back in there. Curl some petals that I think could be curled some more, and so on. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue my bow onto my card, my journal, my tag. Oh my goodness! 
thinking about that ice cream in my freezer. Alright. So, I'm going to glue this on like so. Make sure I get it where I want it. And then I'm going to take my glue gun. my flower in the center there. Hold it for a sec. Alright. And now I'm just going to use one of these gems and put it in the center. And to do that, I'm just put a drop of glue because I never trust these gems to stay where they're supposed to. There we go. And then just decorate the top like I did this one with the lace, um, crocheted lace ribbon. And then I used a piece of sheer ribbon and then I made a charm and attached it to the top. You don't have to add a charm. You can decorate the top different if you like. Whatever you need to do. And then once you decorate it, oops, it just slides on your ring. And there's one tag down. Now, Let's real quick make a bigger tag. Okay. And that's the same basic thing, just the measurements are a little different. So to make the base of the tag for the large one, it's three and a half by seven and a half. Alright. And you do the same process. So you find the center of the top, little corner there, you line it up in the center, punch, the center, punch, you get your nice little top there. Alright, I want a two inch pocket again, so I'm going to go ahead and line it up at the two inch mark right here, and punch, flip it, and punch and this time I want the same decorative edge as I have on the top so I'm just going to line it up in the center and there we go decorative edge decorative edge and now we are ready to fold so go ahead and just fold this up like so And then do a nice little crease bone folder. And I'm going to go ahead and use my eighth of an inch tape. Oh my, really? Am I going to lose that too? Okay. Put it on the side. Burnish it and hopefully it pulls off nice and easy. Yay. Well, spoke too soon. There we go. Alright, and then just fold it up. And there we've got our pocket. Find our center, punch our center, do the little grommet thing. And then for the tag size, the tag is two and five eighths by four and a quarter. And again, you can do the same thing to this tag, this tag as you did to this tag. 
so they look the same. And then you can decorate your tag. And here's one I did from the same paper pad, but in just different paper. And I used a decorative punch from Martha Stewart. I don't know what it's called to make the little lace punch down there and I put pearls in the center of each one and I punched out a flower using the same flower punch and then I punched out some leaves, I punched out a butterfly, added some gems and then for the top I just used ribbon, put ribbon through the hole, and then I cut some pearls and tied a bow around all of that and kind of put it all together. And then that will go on the ring also, like so. So there's two tags. Okay, just a different idea for tags. And then I had a question about what I call embellishment bags. I don't really know what they're called, to be honest. So to make my embellishment bags, um, say I want to give away these hearts to my person. But I don't just want to put them on the ring like that because I'm no offense to Nicole, but that's not really the design that I want to have to go with my project. It kind of clashes. So what I do then is I just remove my insides. I cut a piece of cardstock if I want white or whatever color, same size, and then I put that white cardstock and my embellishments back inside the bag. You can see here, it seals at the bottom, and that way my person can get their gems out. Which this is gorgeous bling. I don't know if you can see that. And then I decorate the top. And all I did was I measured the width of the bag and I cut a piece of paper that width and I wanted it an inch and a half high. So I just doubled that, which gave me three inches. I folded it in half. I stapled it to my bag and I punched a hole in the center and then to cover up my staples I just put a strip of paper over the top and instead of making another bow I just used my bow punch and punched a bow and I put a little foam dot there to raise it up and this is what I call an embellishment bag it could be stickers, or it could be, you know, if you wanted to give them some lace in a bag, you could decorate that, or, you know, some ribbon, or, you know, a, a thing of washi, or whatever. Um, buttons. Just whatever you think they would like. And it goes on the ring, see, just like that. And that's a little surprise. So when they flip through their ring, they've got their little embellishment bag, and then a tag, and then my unfinished tag. Should have put my other tag on there. But I hope that gives you an idea of ta tag idea for our tag swap and kind of what it's going to look like. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will try and answer them as soon as possible. 
and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry about the interruption there from the Schwann's man, but ice cream is one of the four food groups. Right? It's dairy. Works for me. Alright, so. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you next time. Uh, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Hi, Mom. Hi, Irina. Take care.